Good morning. It's Francis Hunt, uh, also known as uh, the Market Sniper, which is um, a blog and URL that I run, and it also ties into my trading strategy. Um, I consider myself a trader, technical analyst, and a teacher of trading. Okay. Um, why did you get into it? What was your sort of motivation? I had a great interest from a very young age. I was fortunate to have both my uh, mother and father actively involved in unit trusts and discussing it, and they'd check it in the newspaper uh, quite regularly. And this was during the 80s, uh, and I was uh, still a young tyke then. And uh, you know, I noticed my father shuffled off to work every day. However, in the evenings when they checked the unit trust, while they were working, there was this marvelous thing that had ticked up, and they'd put a fair amount, because I think uh, my grandmother had passed on um, and there was this money being made on the silence uh, while they were toiling. And I kind of thought, well, that's interesting. So there's multiple streams of income going on here, and one is happening just passively, while the other one is obviously requiring active involvement. And little did I know then, but then, of course, we were in the early 80s, going into late 80s, boom. I went into the army, which was compulsory in South Africa, where I was, and I was in August 1987 intake. And uh, so I, I took all the little savings that I had and I lumped it into the stock market in August 1987, just in time to capture the 35% capitulation of the market of the October 1987 crash. Um, so that was my baptism of fire in terms of uh, the market. I mean, so you have a baptism of fire like that. Um, I would have thought most people would go, right, <laughs> this is not for me. But you stuck with it. Yes, I think the original impression of how consistently it had delivered before things went wrong was of interest. And thankfully, because I was away for two years and had very little call for cash, I did actually end up recouping a large uh, amount. I don't think I got 100% square in the two years that followed, but there was quite a strong rebound um, over the following two years and, and then went onwards and upwards beyond that. Um, so it, certainly the bug had bitten it. I mean, you, you now consider yourself a, a, a technical analysis trader, a, a teacher. Um, you know, what, what sort of qualifies you for that, do you suppose? What's your, what's your track record there? Why do you feel that way? What qualifies someone to be a, a trader or someone who can even teach trading? I think there's a combination uh, of things. It's, uh, in, there's no official degree. There's no tertiary education really for uh, trading. And I, in a sense, experience and time in the market is probably um, the key parameter. And also, in terms of that time, how much do you squeeze into that time? You know, the famous Malcolm Gladwell of 10,000 hours to competence. Um, well, you can actually tighten that time continuum by really intense experience or you can be standoffish and trade, um, but not have the same degree of intensity. So I, I would answer I've had both highly intense periods of trading um, with more trading from distance on a more position view, uh, a, a strong mix. And you're talking now about 26 years because essentially my interest um, was very, very strong already at 18. Um, and I traded options uh, by the time I was 21. And I'd taken, you know, I'd quit the work and gone and taken a seat on the agri, um, uh, small agri exchange where I could trade uh, when I was still in my uh, mid, mid late 20s. So uh, lots of variety of experiences, lots of different underlyings, lots of exposure to other people's teachings. So you start as a student yourself invariably. So I'd gone to, you know, I'd heard about Larry Williams, I'd heard about Neeson of candlestick charts. I sought these people out in educational spheres very, very aggressively. I was very interested in who were the actual traders. I found that I didn't want to learn from marketeers of trading techniques. I wanted to learn from true traders that traded. So generally those people I sorted out, they had to be traders too. And then I distilled those things that were most interesting to me. There's so much in terms of the realm of trading um, that once you've define the entire body of work and you've realized how little you know of the full body of work, once you've started to touch on them, you have to start eliminating. Um, so that's a, a greater degree of maturity has now occurred. You've kind of noticed and you have to distill out that which is of value for yourself and that which you don't consider of value in any form. And this process of elimination then hives you right back down to one thing. And I personally believe you need to do one thing exceptionally well in trading. 
I don't believe you should be doing five or six different strategies. I don't think I've ever met a trader that was successful that traded Bollinger Band breakouts on Monday, um, pivot points on Tuesday, was a long-term moving average trader of indices on Wednesday uh, and flicked around. So you needed to really get under the skin of something uh, and do it really well. Some people go so far as to trade, you know, one currency pair and they will only do cable, GBP, USD, and they think uh, and they believe that there's almost an inherent personality to it that is somewhat unique to the others and they may or may not be right. Um, but you do need that specialization and you need to home around a strategy that fits with your um, personality as well. So, you know, based on this, uh, this, this thinking, this process, this experience, just talk a bit about your, your normal day. We're in your, your home office. Just explain your typical day. Yes, so uh, I actually look at a number of underlying markets. So my typical day can be very much dependent on um, those positions that I'm currently holding. Obviously, the foreign currency market is a 24-7 market. So, you know, I've had instances where I've gone to bed at 3 in the morning because I'm at a critical point on a, a potential breakout trade, um, which I've gone in my full allowable size. Um, and you know, I'm waiting for the Japanese session almost to kick off in the morning to, you know, that's a bit extreme, but uh, essentially there is no real absolute typical day. But uh, normally I will get up and I will ch check um, positions that, that I have a device that almost while I wake up, I find it's very useful to understand what's gone on in the morning. And so even on a mobile device before I've put, you know, any work clothes on or jumped in the shower, I've probably had a snapshot look at anything where I have an open position and how it's moved. Because I find the brain likes to work and join the dots of the overnight session. So this particularly ties in with foreign currency more than um, your equity markets. If there's things that are of an equity nature, there's less of that urgency, so you catch the equity open. So it's a little bit evasive an answer because there is no typical day, but I go into a trading floor um, where I'm on an FX desk uh, in London as well, and uh, I, I manage positions on a particular book over there as well as spread betting accounts and on, on equity. So I have quite a broad farm and it depends how heavily I'm involved in each underlying market. So my selection criteria is um, very technical and specific to market setup. So I have a whole bunch of criteria that have to occur for a trade to become interesting. So the, my day is generally dictated by how many of those I have on the go, um, if any at all. Yes, yeah, so my, my life is taken up with getting lots of precious time with my uh, daughter experiences. My sports I love are um, being outdoors, uh, love of activities outdoors, so mountain bike. Um, I did open water swimming, so we swam from islands to islands in the Greek Cyclades in what was called swim trek. And then you, you, you fall asleep on the yacht and get fed some lunch and you do it all over again. So that sort of thing works for me. So you're physically active. I think as a trader you need to be healthy. So I fascinate about nutrition and peak performance on all things. I think by being peak performance physically you manifest uh, and you give yourself the best opportunity to be emotionally stable and mentally at your best as well. So I love diet uh, and nutrition concepts and try to remain, uh, look to remain fit uh, and make, you know, you can, you can haul back many quality years in your later years just by uh, doing some good housekeeping um, in terms of how you choose to live. And uh, outside of that, sports, um, you know, love, love a bit of rugby. It's too hard a game for me to play, uh, certainly at my age. Uh, but I remember in growing up in South Africa, the fanaticism around that as a sport, so I'll follow the spring box. Um, learning uh, kite surfing at the moment. Um, so, yeah. Just young at heart, remain young at heart, remain young at heart, uh, heart and see the opportunities that are coming and keep thinking the best years are still ahead. There's some fantastic experiences to be had. I think that whole mentality will see you be both youthful, vital and wanting to look after yourself in the best so that you're in the best state to exploit those. Um, and I continue to feel that way um, and I'm looking forward to you know, helping develop my daughter in that way so that she's an optimist at heart as well. Um, and always see the balance of things. The challenges that have come to you have always uh, set you up for the rewards. You've never been sent something that you can't cope with. Um, and in the long run, that which is sent to you serves you. Always ask the question, how did that negative event serve me? How does it make me bat better? That losing trade, what could I have done differently? 
do your post um, uh, mortems on that. What did I do incorrectly? The, the lessons are the ones you pay for, so make sure you take the lesson. You know, you wouldn't sign up for a remote course, university course, and they deliver the materials and you throw the paperwork in the bin. So don't take a trade and a loss and not read the, read the lesson that was sent with it. Um, and that would be certainly integral to what I would uh, say. So, yeah, love that. Love the economics. Love travel. Um, and, yeah, enjoy taking the message. I enjoy teaching as well, bringing the message to people. I try to be good at it and I try to record it and make interesting predictions. Um, based on the HVF theory and to give it the credit and all the people that have contributed it that I've leaned on um, and help get it out to other people to become better traders. You know, it would be nice to see more of the retail guys becoming part of the 